Welcome back to our Cal's Financial Literacy Lessons. Today we're going to talk about credit. This is a reminder that I am not a financial planner or advisor, that these are educational videos only, and that these lessons are designed to be used in conjunction with uh, the correlating assignment. And so you might want to open that up if you're part of the class so that you can complete the assignment as you watch the video. Okay, let's get started. Our goals for today are to understand credit scores and how to build good credit and how to use credit cards in a smart and safe way. So for your warm up, I'd like you to begin by answering both of these questions. The first is when would you use a credit card and what types of purchases? And then what do you know about credit scores? What are they? How are they calculated? And what do they do? So just activate your prior knowledge here. Notice what you already know about these topics before we move on. Okay, quick credit 101 overview. So credit can also be referred to as borrowed money and it can come through two major forms. The first is through credit cards that you get through your bank or through your credit union. And this is called revolving credit because as long as you pay it off, you get access to it over and over and over and over again, which is different from a loan, which is a different type of credit. And we have auto loans, home loans, cash loans, student loans, all these different types of loans for different purposes. And this is referred to as installment credit. You get one lump sum that you would get approved for for a very specific use. All these forms of credit are borrowed with interest. Interest is how you pay the bank to have that upfront access to cash. It isn't free to borrow money. We have to pay for the privilege of borrowing money from banks. All right. Let's talk first about credit scores. So a bank isn't going to loan money to just anyone. They want to make sure that if they're going to loan you money, that they're going to get it back. And how they determine whether you are somebody who is responsible and trustworthy with money is through your credit score. So the type of credit that you are offered and the amount that's offered to you depends on that score. And your credit score is a number, um, typically between 300 and 850, um, that the bank uses to assess your financial history and to assess how trustworthy you are. And that number often determines if they're going to loan to you and if so, how much. So that number between 300 and 850 is calculated by a credit bureau or a credit agency that collects all of your information and about all of your financial history and what you currently um, might owe. And they use all of that information to create that score. There's three primary agencies that compute credit scores. They are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So these are really the three agencies that you would get a credit score from you don't um, you don't get it from the bank the bank has to look up your credit score from one of those three um, one of those three agencies so I'm gonna move my video down so that you can see these different factors that affect your credit so these this is like a nice pie graph here that shows the things that go into credit um, how much you owe is a huge part of your credit score. So if you already have loans out or you have um, credit card debt, for example, that can negatively impact your credit score. Um, your payment history, do you make payments on time? Not just on things like credit cards or loans, but also things like your electric bill or your phone bill, which is also kind of considered a part of credit because you get to borrow the service before you pay for it. So if you think about it, um, your electric bill, you pay after you've already used that electricity. So you have borrowed their service with the intent to pay it back. Whether you paid it back on time or in full is going to impact your credit score. The types of credit you have open, so it's not necessarily a bad thing to have more than one credit card, but if you have many accounts open, that can negatively affect your score. 
and how long your credit history is. And that can be really tough for young people. Credit scores are um, in some ways kind of stacked against you because you just don't have a lot of financial history. And that makes it hard for banks to consider you trustworthy because they just don't have any past data to go off of to determine that you will make your payments on time. So for young people, you might not start out with a bad credit score, but you're not going to start with an excellent one. That's something you have to build up over time with good money habits. Last note here too, because this is very relevant to young people, is that even landlords will check your credit score before choosing to rent to you. So it's really important that you start off on the right foot and that you start building good credit as a young person because it is going to impact um, the things that are available to you in your future. So a few safe ways to build credit as a young adult include first and foremost, paying your utility bills on time. Once you move out on your own and the water bill and the electric bill and the internet is all in your name, you're going to want to make sure that you're not late on those payments and that they are in your name. If it's not in your name, but you're the one paying for it, you're not going to build credit for it. So you have to make sure that those utilities are in your name. A second way could be to use a credit card. We're going to talk more about credit cards soon. There are some starter options available. Um, you can open secured credit cards um, that limit how much you can spend. You can become authorized users on your parents' credit cards if um, they find you trustworthy enough to do that. Or you can open your own traditional credit card. But not every bank will give a credit card right away if you don't have any banking history. It's just something to keep in mind. The third tip is to keep your debt low. We'll talk about this more as well, but whatever type of credit you're using, it is essential that you pay it off every month and that you don't overspend and go into credit card debt. More on that later. And then finally, once you're an adult and you're moving out on your own, renting an apartment or a home in your own name is a great way to build credit. It's okay for your parents to be co-signers on a lease, but make sure that your name is also on the account or the agreement as well. All right, so now let's talk about some um, responsible ways to use a credit card. When you choose to get a credit card is a very personal decision. It's also a very important one because you need to be very responsible with a credit card. You can get into a lot of financial trouble if you use a credit card irresponsibly. Um, so it's not something I would encourage you to just go out and do. You need to really make sure that you're ready for it. But if you are going to have a credit card, here are some tips to use it responsibly. The first is to use it every month, but only on purchases that are consistent and that you know you can pay for. So for example, only use it when you purchase gas or when you buy groceries or pay your phone bill, something that you have budgeted money for that you know you will always be able to pay off. It's probably not a good idea right away to put a plane ticket, to some exciting vacation that you had not budgeted for on a credit card that you may not be able to pay off. That can really hurt your credit score as well as put you into credit card debt um, where you're going to have to pay high levels of interest. And we want to avoid that. The second um, tip is to pay off the entire amount to avoid paying interest. So don't mistake the minimum payment with paying off your credit card. So this is um, this is a really important note here. If you put $500 on your credit card in a month, you might only have to make a minimum payment of $50, for example, I'm making this up, but that means that you are gonna have, still have to pay the other 450 at some point, and you're gonna have to pay interest on that $450. That can add up very, very quickly. So it is ideal, if you can, to pay that entire $500 off that month, and then you don't have to pay for any interest. 
If for some reason you can't pay that money off in a single month and say, for example, you had to buy new tires and it was not part of your budget and you had to put it on your credit card, okay, it happens, that's life, but pay it off ASAP. Make it your priority to pay off any credit card debt that you're carrying. A third tip would be to set up automatic bill pay or set reminders on your phone so that you don't ever forget to make a payment. If you forget to pay your credit card on time, that can also accrue more interest and hurt your credit score over time. And then finally, number four is check your statements monthly to make sure that your charges are accurate and um, use it to balance your budget. You want to make sure that nobody has hacked your credit card and is charging things that you did not authorize, particularly if you're using your card online and then you might be more prone to somebody stealing your credit card number. So why have a credit card then, especially if you're going to pay it off every month? There's a couple of reasons. One is for secure online spending. A second is that it does help you build your credit score when you use it appropriately, which might qualify you for higher levels of credit later to help you build wealth later on or make really big important purchases like a first home. Also, you can earn rewards through credit cards, things like percentages, cash back. For example, some credit cards will give you 1% back on everything that you spend, or you can choose categories like gas or groceries to get higher percentages on. Some people who travel a lot like to get credit cards that gives them free airline miles that makes traveling um, less expensive. And then credit cards often will have little bonuses where they will give you discounts to certain stores that they're partnering with. So if you have um, maybe a discount to Starbucks, they'll give you 5% off at Starbucks if you have a certain credit card. Um, so lots of different types of discounts available with different types of cards. So there are some benefits to using them when you use them responsibly. Okay. I'd like you to take a moment now if you're going through the activity to pause the video and just check your knowledge and your opinion on these different scenarios. So each scenario is asking you to decide whether or not the person in each um, scenario should use a credit card for a purchase. So just for example, on number one here, it says that Marge, age 18, plans to buy a car so that she's able to drive to school. She's short $4,000 and plans to put that amount on her credit card to buy the car. Should she do this? Yes, no, or depends. If you choose depends, think about what other information you would need for this situation to make you feel comfortable with her putting this on her credit card or not. So I'm going to let you go through those on your own and just check your knowledge and um, your perspective on these questions. All right, we're going to finish up here some with, with some terminology related to credit and credit cards. Um, things that if you get into a, a place where you're ready to open a credit card, you're going to want to know. The first is an annual fee. Some credit cards charge annual fees for the privilege of using the card. Um, this is specifically common among rewards credit cards that offer additional perks. So look for ways to avoid that annual fee if you can. APR stands for annual percentage rate. This is the annual percentage rate on your card. Um, it's the interest rate it charges if you carry a balance. And interest rates on credit cards are typically variable, so they can change, and they're often very high. It would not be unusual to find an interest rate as high as 20 or more percent on a credit card. So if you are looking um, and shopping around, you would ideally want one that maintains a relatively low APR, but hopefully you won't even encounter it because you're always going to pay off your credit card. <laughs> The next term is billing cycle. Um, this is the time period between two statement dates. They're not always the first of the month, um, so it's important to note because that's when you're gonna have to make your monthly payments um, and when you'll know when your money is due. 
Cash advance is another term. Um, it's ideal if you can avoid them, but you should know that most credit cards allow you to access cash using your credit line. So they typically come with an upfront fee and have a much higher interest rate. So it's not ideal to use it, but it is there and it is a part of most credit card options. All right. Credit limit. This is the total amount that you are allowed to put or to charge to your credit card. If you exceed that limit, usually your card will be declined. Um, if for some reason it goes through and you go beyond it, you are probably looking at paying a fee for that. So knowing your credit limit is important. And typically, the longer your credit history and the higher your income and the higher your credit score, the more um, credit you have available to you. So when you're first starting with a credit card, you might only get like a $2,000 um, credit limit. But as you build, you could get 20 or 30 or more thousand dollars of credit, but that's something you have to earn over time. The grace period is the period between your statement date and your due date. So usually when your credit card is due, you get a couple extra days to pay it off before you end up um, getting penalized. You might not have a grace period or you might. It would be important for you to know. However, I still highly encourage you to pay by the deadline, by the due date. The minimum payment we mentioned, this is the minimum amount that's due on your account every month. Um, but remember, if you don't pay the full amount, you will end up paying interest. And so it's better to pay more than the minimum payment. But there is a minimum payment regardless that you have to pay on your credit. It's usually a very small fraction of your total balance, meaning that they are going to charge you high interest on the remaining balance. It's one of the ways that the banks will make money off of your credit card, and you really want to try to avoid that. And then rewards we discussed. These are the incentives um, for you to choose a certain, um, a certain credit card. It can come as cash back, points, miles, discounts, things like that.